Hello everyone, it's Paola and today I'm doing a book haul. Yes, I know I just posted a book haul, but um, we moved houses as I'm sure you've already heard me talked about. But in moving houses I had to get rid of a whole lot of books and that was very much of an introspective work <laughs> in myself because why do I want to keep these books? Why do I why did I even get them in the first place? And should I really give them away without giving them a chance? The answer was yes to many of them. So I went to the used bookstore which recently opened because uh, I don't know. I don't know why. I got some books. I will say that this is a very 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 pasty book haul. All the books that I got were by white authors, aside from one of them, which is also done by a white author, but she's Latinx, so... Let's start with that one, shall we? It is... Oh, you can barely see it. Uh, the Living Infinite by Chantel Acevedo. This is an adult historical fiction novel inspired by the true story of the Spanish princess Eulalia. I believe that's how you pronounce it in English. If you don't, then it's Eulalia, because it's Spanish, who cares? And it says here that she was an outspoken firebrand at the Bourbon court during the troubled final years of her family's reign. So, generally, I just got this one because I love Chantel. I did an interview with her. I will leave it linked down below. And Chantel is the sweetest person on earth, and I really, really want to try uh, her other stuff. Also, by the way, this is an arc. This is not how the real final cover looks. This is how the real final cover looks. Moving on to The Messenger by Marcus Zusak. I'm going to read the back of the book because I don't know what it is about. I just got it because it is by Marcus Zusak and Marcus Zusak wrote one of my favorite books of all time. Yes, it is The Book Thief. I know I'm not original at all. Um, anyway, it says here, protect the diamonds, survive the clubs, dig deep through the spades, feel the hearts. Ed Kennedy is an underage cab driver without much of a future. He's pathetic at playing cards, hopelessly in love with his best friend Audrey, and utterly devoted to his coffee-drinking dog, the doorman. His life is one of peaceful routine and incompetence until he inadvertently stops a bank robbery. That's when the first ace arrives in the mail. That's when Ed becomes the messenger. Chosen to care, he makes his way through town, helping and hurting when necessary, until one question remains. Who's behind Ed's mission? Ooh, this one sounds interesting. It's kind of like a thriller, action-packed, quite short. Is this 300 pages? Yeah, 350 pages. Interesting. I don't know how much I want to prioritize this, but I do know that I wanted to read this one as soon as I knew that he had written other stuff. Next, I got P.S. I Love You by Cecilia Ahern. Cecilia Ahern is one of my favorite white authors. I don't know what it is about her novels that I just fall quickly in love with them. This one and Love Rosie are some of my favorite works in general. And this is a book that I read in Spanish once upon a time. And I kinda, maybe sorta, want to read it in English. We'll see. This sounds like a trip to nostalgia. Next is Emma by Jane Austen. I've been meaning to read this book for as long as I've been watching Zoe from Read by Zoe do videos because I know she loves Jane Austen and I know she loves Pride and Prejudice and I've been meaning to read Jane Austen's works for a really really long time and this is actually the basis of Clueless which I did not know up until like three years ago I don't know but it just sounds like fun YA of the 1800s <laughs> we'll see and then I got a bunch of romance books by white authors because they were 10 pesos 10 pesos is like less than a dollar so I was like huh okay I guess I'll do it. And so I don't know what they are about even. I just know that they are paperback romances and I need to step up my game in the romance genre. Yes, I know I already have a lot of romance books to read because of my birthday book haul. Don't worry about it. If I don't prioritize these by March of next year, I'm getting rid of them. Um, yeah, I love the used bookstore. <laughs> anyway, so the first one is Kansas Kiss by Christine Dorsey. Dorsey. 
and this says defiant passion young samantha lowry cautiously examined the handsome confederate officer she'd wounded oh no a band of ex-rebel marauders had sworn to drive her from her land and she was certain this man was one of them although she was mesmerized by the spellbinding depth of the stranger's deep green eyes and the tempting strength of his lean muscular body samantha knew she couldn't afford to drop her guard for an instant but she soon found she had no defenses against his forceful embraces and the devastating softness of his lips or the sweet shameless desire to stay forever a prisoner in his arms oh boy i did not know this featured a confederate hero yikes maybe i will do like an experiment of do they stand the test of time and if they don't do i still like them which is going to be a fun little experiment next we have touched by moonlight by carol howie this is a hot cover this is why i got these books because the covers are hot and i actually like these covers no i do not care if people see me in public with these covers i don't know what people have against covers like this i like them anyway this one says touched by moonlight is a wonderful love story not to be missed oh that was that's a blurb sorry uh the love seek reader Terence Gavilan could turn a sleepy little turn-of-the-century village into a booming seaside resort overnight. But the real passion of his life was searching for Emma Hunt, the mysterious and elusive creator of the tantalizing romances he admired. When he found her, he planned to prove that real life could be so much more exciting than fiction. The passionate writer... To the proper folk of Braydon's speech, Philippa Braydon was the prim daughter of their community's founding father. Yet secretly, she enjoyed swimming naked in the ocean and writing steamy novels. <gasps> Philippa had no intention of revealing her double life to anyone, especially not to a man as arrogant and overbearing as Terence Gavilan. But she didn't count on being touched by moonlight and ending up happier than any of her heroines. Ooh, this one sounds fun. It also sounds quite feminist, if I say so myself. I know there's nothing feminist about a man reading romance novels, but I think it's interesting because I'm going to assume that Philippa used a male pen name, maybe? We don't know. I'm getting even more excited about this experiment. I can't do that. I have so much to read already, but it does sound very, very interesting. And then I got Slightly Scandalous by Mary Ballow. Meet the Bedouins, six brothers and sisters, men and women of passion and privilege, daring and sensuality, enter their dazzling world of high society and breathtaking seduction, where each will seek love, fight temptation, and court scandal, and where Freya Bedwin, the wild-hearted daughter, meets her match in a man as passionate, reckless, and scandalous. So this one sounds interesting. It sounds quite steamy. I'm getting very excited about these freaking novels. Why? I shouldn't <laughs> be wanting to read them way more now that i think of my experiment video then i got falling for the highland rogue by anne lethbridge and this one doesn't really have a synopsis i don't know the only man to see beyond her cold beauty oh yes i'm already intrigued huh who knew white people could write interesting stuff this great lady charity west lives in the dark world of the city city underbelly She's used and abused, yearning for freedom, and her distrust of men runs deep until she meets Highland Rogue Logan Gilbrey. She's a sex worker. How interesting. How old is this? This is from 2013. Could it be feminist? We don't know. Most of the sex work rep I read in romance tends to do a lot with characters having to do sex work as opposed to them wanting to do sex work or having to do it and enjoying it but kind of you know they they would rather do something else which is not necessarily not true but i wish we had more sex work rep where the characters are perfectly happy doing sex work um here clearly she's not happy at all but anyway uh whiskey runner logan lives outside the law and is used to looking danger in the eye 
Charity may just prove to be his most dangerous challenge yet. Her beauty is unrivaled, but it's her fire that lures Logan. He'll do anything to save Charity, even face her inevitable betrayal. Ooh, this sounds angsty. I love historical fiction just because of how angsty and like yearny it is. And then finally, I got like a little dog bitten book called uh, Not Just a Wallflower by Carol Mortimer. This one says, Innocent Lady's Companion or Lady of Mystery. Enigmatic beauty Ellie Rosewood is the talk of the ton. What? Her appointed guardian, Justin, Duke of Royston, has one job, to find Miss Rosewood a husband. But confirmed rake, Justin wants Ellie all for himself. <gasps> With her coming out a huge success, Ellie is overwhelmed by the attention of London's most eligible bachelors. She finds an unexpected haven in the company of the arrogant Justin, and he begins to discover there is more to this unworldly wildflower than first appears. Interesting, interesting. All right. Okay, so that's it for today's book haul. I got nine books total, which is not bad at all for, I don't know how many books I took there, but who cares? And these historical fictions are calling to me, I'm not gonna lie. Let's hope they're as good as I can make them out to be in my head. The only one I'm worried about is this one because of the confederate dude. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down below if you've read any of these, what you think of them. If you think the experiment will be interesting, let me know so that I can prioritize it way more than, you know, March of next year. And yeah, if you haven't already and you'd like to, go ahead and hit subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!